On April 8, 2024, mark your calendars because it's going to be a day to remember. We're talking about a mind-blowing celestial show, a total solar eclipse. And this ain't your average spectacle. It's a rare event that doesn't happen every day. Interestingly enough, it's being linked to some electoral predictions in the United States and Israel. Some folks even see it as a sign of a possible apocalypse. Today, I'm taking you on a journey to unpack the significance of this solar eclipse and the impact it might have. Get ready for a jaw-dropping revelation that's sure to grab your attention. The Bible, a book full of mysteries, often mentions celestial phenomena in connection with prophecies about the end of the world. Biblical verses talk about the sun, the moon, the stars, and even eclipses as prophetic markers of the apocalypse. Take, for example, what's written in Luke 21:25, which talks about extraordinary signs in the sky and on earth, with nations in a state of perplexity facing roaring seas and waves. People will be gripped by fear, expecting imminent catastrophic events, while witnessing the heavenly bodies moving in a terrifying manner. This teaching, spoken by Jesus, underscores the importance of astronomical events as heralds of the last days. So, when rare or peculiar celestial events occur, many start to wonder if these phenomena are signs of the end times. To truly grasp the meaning behind phenomena like solar or lunar eclipses, we gotta dive deep into history. Check out those sacred texts that tell similar tales, keep tabs on current events around the globe, and really dig into the circumstances involved. By making these connections, we can figure out if we're witnessing something significant, or if it's just another chapter of a biblical prophecy unfolding right before our eyes. A powerful reminder of the cyclical nature of historical events is found in Ecclesiastes 1, 9, which goes, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. It drives home the idea that events have a way of repeating themselves over time. And that's where things get even more fascinating. The divine essence remains unchanged, stretching from the past to the present and reaching into the future, indicating that the way the divine communicates with us and points out our errors doesn't vary much. Sticking to a pattern that's been observed throughout history and documented in sacred scriptures. There's a recurring theme, especially concerning idolatry and a nation's sins, that has always found a decisive response. We consistently see biblical prophets addressing Israel's idolatry and sins, accompanied by clear signs of what's to come, emphasizing the continuity of these messages over time. Diving into the pages of chapter 6 of Revelation, we're hit with a whole bunch of symbols, and these four horsemen really stand out, each one representing different aspects of divine judgment on the world. So first off, you got this rider on a horse, holding up a conquering torch, signaling a wild time of divisions and global turmoil ahead. Then comes the second rider, all about war, stirring up conflict and wrecking the peace we used to have. Next up, it's famine, bringing economic devastation and crises that hit the fields and crops hard. And bringing up the rear, here comes death, spreading epidemics and diseases wherever it goes. These events, playing out on the world stage, echo historical cycles already recorded in scriptures, showing how divine actions repeat in response to human failures and idolatries. This back and forth between judgment and compassion highlights the ongoing dynamic between humans and the sacred. One striking example of this dynamic is seen in the figure of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, chosen by the divine to execute judgment not only against Israel, but also against other nations like Egypt, Assyria, Moab, and even regions we now know as the Gaza Strip, setting the stage for decisive conquests. The prophet Jeremiah describes a period marked by disasters, including a horrendous plague and a famine that ravaged the land for years, weakening nations before their submission to Babylon. A divine warning is cited in Jeremiah 38, too, laying out a clear choice. Staying in the city would mean death by sword, famine, or disease. On the flip side, surrendering to the Babylonians could ensure survival, allowing the survivors to carry on their lives as a prize for their surrender. This dilemma between death and a shot at living underscores the importance of decisions in the face of divine commandments. Since 2020, we've been witnessing a string of impactful events that have left a mark on the world. Disease outbreaks, hunger, economic crises, and a wave of protests and social unrest. 
especially with the escalating military tensions involving Russia. These occurrences transcending national borders serve as stark warnings about the ethical missteps and misguided worship plaguing our societies. Many view these signs as a divine judgment warning indicating we're on the brink of significant changes. The notion that these events can be interpreted as divine warnings suggests there were precursors delivered to prophets, as it's typical for divinity to signal its intentions before taking significant actions. Digging deeper into the symbolism found in scriptures, especially concerning the sun and the moon, we uncover layers of meaning. It's interesting to note that within biblical narratives, the moon often represents Israel, while the sun symbolizes non-Jewish nations. A fascinating fact is that, according to Genesis, the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day, although the earth was already illuminated by a form of light and covered with vegetation on the third day. This leads us to question how flora managed to thrive without direct sunlight or rain, fundamental elements for their survival. This observation underscores the crucial role of the sun and the moon not only in regulating climate and terrestrial ecosystems, but also in maintaining ocean currents and precipitation patterns. Intriguingly, before the flood narrated in Noah's time, rain was a phenomenon considered exceptional. Genesis 2 and verses 5 and 6 gives us a fascinating peek into a world still in its infancy, a place without vegetation or cultivation, marking a time when nature followed a much different course than it does now. The text describes how before any heavenly intervention bringing rain to the earth, the planet lacked cultivators and the moisture provided by the rains we know today. Instead, a mist rising from the ground itself kept the soil hydrated. In this early phase, there were no plants or complex vegetation yet, since rain, as we understand it, wasn't part of the natural cycle with the soil moisture relying on these vapor emissions. It's intriguing to ponder the divine decision to create plants on the third day, a phase predating the formation of the sun, the moon, and even the first rains. Genesis 1 in verses 14 to 19 explains that the sun and the moon weren't just made to light up or influence the weather, but they had much more significant purposes. They were appointed to mark the transition from day to night, determine periods for sacred celebrations, signal the changing seasons and other significant moments, thus serving as fundamental timekeepers of epochs and eras. In the realm of prophecies, especially when we turn our gaze to the striking episodes that precede the end times, celestial bodies like the sun and the moon take on a pretty intense symbolic dimension. When we dive into the scriptures, specifically Joel 2 verses 30 to 31, we come across the prediction of extraordinary events both in the heavens and on earth. These are described as heavenly and earthly wonders, including visual phenomena of blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The biblical narrative tells us that there will be a transformation in the sky, where the sun will darken and the moon will turn red, heralding the much-feared and majestic day of the Lord a clear sign of the imminence of divine judgment. These manifestations in the sky, described as the sun losing its light and the moon gaining a bloody glow, are seen by many as warnings of a period filled with challenges and critical decisions, referred to as the Great Day of the Lord. These events are not just visual spectacles, but symbolize the prelude to an era marked by significant conflicts and natural disasters, from wars to volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, echoing Jesus' words about the tribulations preceding events of profound transformation. Interestingly, between the years 2014 and 2015, we witnessed a remarkable astrophysical event that aligns with these prophecies, a series of four total lunar eclipses, each aligned with important holidays in the Jewish calendar. This phenomenon, due to its rarity and significance, was called the Tetrod of Blood Moons. This sequence of events has raised various speculations about its spiritual and historical significance, remaining to this day a topic shrouded in great mystery and fascination. In the realm of biblical symbols, the number four vibes with the notion of a divine presence spreading worldwide, as unveiled by sacred scriptures. The moon casting its glow at night is seen as a divine guardian, especially watching over Israel's welfare. The red hue witnessed during consecutive lunar eclipses over two years has been interpreted by many as a harbinger of imminent conflicts and pivotal moments of judgment. The happening of four such phenomena scattered across this period carries a profound message, where the number two could symbolize divisions, 
hinting at a potential fragmentation of the Israeli land. This interval is deemed a preamble to an era of great challenges, spanning seven years during which nations will be assessed, primarily for their conduct towards Israel. There's a prophecy foreseeing the gathering of all nations for a divine judgment in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, focusing particularly on those who harmed Israel, scattering its people and sharing its territory. These events, as described in the Book of Joel, seem to resonate in current times with the issue of the division of Israeli lands. Interestingly, scriptures specifically mention Tyre and Sidon, territories of the ancient Phoenicians, celebrated for their skilled commerce within this prophetic context. Ezekiel, in one of his texts, draws a comparison between the king of Tyre and an entity opposing Christ, shedding light through history on the intricate implications of this narrative and its connection to larger-scale prophetic events. Riding the waves of history, the Phoenicians, who once called the cities of Tyre and Sidon home, found themselves under the rule of the mighty Greek and Roman empires. Over time, many of them migrated to Greece and Rome, discovering fresh opportunities in these lands. Interestingly, it was Europa, a Phoenician princess and daughter of a prominent king of Tyre, who lent her name to the European continent. This historical bond persists to this day, influencing organizations like the European Union and the UN, and even having connections, albeit indirect, with countries like the United States. More than just historical facts, these connections between the past and present carry deep, perhaps even prophetic, meanings. It's believed that modern nations somehow linked to the ancient Phoenician cities will play crucial roles in formalizing a seven-year peace treaty an event prophesied in the Bible as a precursor to the era of the Antichrist. This scenario underscores the importance of understanding these historical ties to envision future directions. The year 2017 in the U.S. was marked by events that seemed to resonate with such prophecies. One example was the Great American Solar Eclipse on August 21st which not only captivated millions, but also revived the connection between astronomical phenomena and ancient prophecies. An eclipse that swept across the United States recently really caught the whole country's imagination. But you gotta get that the real juice of an eclipse ain't just about the shadow play. It's all about what it symbolizes, especially when you tie it into biblical prophecies and big moments in Israel's history. Check this out. On September 23, 2017, we saw this crazy astronomical event that lined up perfectly with what's written in the book of Revelation chapter 12. On that wild day, there was this cosmic setup involving the Virgo and Leo constellations, plus Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and of course the Sun and the Moon. They all came together to make this image that matched up eerily well with what the Bible predicted. And get this, that kind of alignment? It's super rare, only happening once before in history. And guess what? History is gearing up to repeat itself in a pretty intriguing way. Real soon, those same constellations are going to play a big role again, but this time tied up with the 2024 eclipse. Revelation chapter 12 talks about this showdown between the Antichrist, also known as the Beast and the Saints, and it throws in some stuff about Israel and Jerusalem getting a fresh start. These events are all prophesied as major milestones in a time of deep change and spiritual significance. In the United States, a series of events served as a wake-up call about how the country approached the Israel issue, unfolding over three and a half years from August 2017. In the meantime, until January 28, 2020, the then-President Donald Trump rolled out a bold plan called Peace to Prosperity. The proposal aimed at creating a Palestinian state, offering 70% of Israel's territory, including the eastern part of Jerusalem, as its territorial base. This offer represented a significant nod to the Palestinians, seen as heirs of the Philistines' historical enemies of the Israelis. Shortly after this move, the world was hit by a pandemic, bringing not only a health crisis but also a series of economic challenges, social unrest, and geopolitical tensions, including friction with Russia. This turbulent period culminated in the loss of power for prominent leaders like Netanyahu in Israel and Trump himself in the U.S. in the year 2020. Interestingly, contrary to what many might have expected as an apocalyptic scenario, marked by the figure of the four horsemen, what was seen was a kind of reverse apocalypse. Amidst these upheavals, there was a strengthening of both traditional and new alliances, notably between Gog and Magog, 
symbolizing a union of ancient forces. This phenomenon was evidenced mainly in the strategic alignment between OPEC countries, major oil producers, and the BRICS bloc, with China taking center stage. This realignment profoundly altered global power dynamics, shaping a new world geopolitical landscape. Right now, there's a whole new ball game shaking up the stronghold of the U.S. dollar in global trade, setting off a chain reaction that ends up with inflation and questioning the solidity of the U.S. financial system. Interestingly, these moves seem to echo ancient biblical prophecies tied to the fate of Israel in the end times. Fast forward to April 8, 2024, and there's this buzz about a solar eclipse, exactly seven years after the memorable one in 2017. This sky show, expected to be visible all over the U.S., will draw a distinct X across the country, a symbolic contrast with the sign described in the book of Revelation chapter 12. The full eclipse will only be visible in the eastern half of the United States, adding a mysterious vibe to the run-up to the 2024 U.S. presidential elections. Just like the prophetic sign mentioned in Revelation, the constellation of Leo symbolizing Judah and Jerusalem will be aligned with the Sun during the April 8, 2024 eclipse. This starry setup harks back to the Lion of Judah, a representation of Jesus, infusing the event with rich layers of spiritual and historical meaning. But how do all these pieces fit together with sacred scriptures? The Bible often leans on the number seven to signify completeness or the end of a specific cycle. In the prophecy context, this translates to the conclusion of the 70 weeks determined for the people of Israel, understood as cycles of seven years. So the eclipse isn't just a harbinger of future events. It's a reflection of significant historical moments and their connection to what lies ahead. The X-shaped path of the eclipse resembles the Hebrew letter Tav, symbolizing a mark or seal, a symbol that prominently appears twice in Scripture, including a pivotal episode in Ezekiel chapter 9. The text talks about the symbolism of the Tav, portraying it as a badge of comfort for those who express regret for the mistakes made regarding the first temple before it was devastated by Babylon. Similarly, the Tav is associated with the ritual of marking door frames during the first Passover celebration, an event detailed in the book of Exodus. This symbol also evokes both the mark of the beast and the seal that protects the 144,000 chosen during a time of great trial lasting for seven years. Therefore, the appearance of the Tav, formed by an eclipse in the United States, is interpreted as an omen carrying a double meaning. It offers protection and at the same time foreshadows a judgment, especially regarding issues related to the land of Israel. 